Hi, this is Charlie Matatuyel with Blue Bear Flutes. Uh, of course, if you haven't found us on YouTube yet, then what are you doing here? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so you will find Blue Bear Flutes all over the web, just about everywhere you can imagine. Instagram, Facebook, uh, even Pinterest, and on a rare occasion you'll find us on Twitter. Uh, and my favorite two are, of course, always YouTube and our Instagram. Our Instagram shows you so many amazing things that we have going on, so please make sure you check that out. Today's video, once again, if you haven't seen us much on YouTube, we have hundreds of videos on making and playing the Native American flute, so make sure you check those out when you're finished with this one, and be sure to subscribe and like and do everything that is the most absolutely beneficial that you possibly can do to help us out. So, having said that, this video is about our amplifier. Uh, over the years, we have had multiple different amplifiers that we've carried. As a matter of fact, I've seen this one through at least four or five different versions. So this is uh, the current version, and at this point, we may have uh, muted or hidden or made private those previous amp videos so that you don't get confused about which one's which. Having said that, this amplifier is a really great unit. It's presumably 10 to 25 watts. The manufacturer suggests it's 25 watts, which gets kind of loud, you know, which is pretty nice at that range. However, for a high-pitched instrument like the Native American flute, this one even being in a mid-range mid or medium-low tone uh, in the key of G is still considered a high-pitched instrument. I would suggest only using the amplifier at about half to three-quarters volume at the most, simply because you don't want to uh, amplify something that is high-pitched. It's just kind of common knowledge. So what we're going to talk about today is how to use this amplifier and I'm going to go over every single thing that I can possibly dream of as carefully and meticulously as possible though I know people are probably still going to have some questions afterwards um, and uh, like I said certainly I'm going to do my best here. So this is basically what it comes with. On occasion you may receive one that comes with an additional adapter or a cable or something of that nature but this is it. It comes with a wired microphone with a 3.5 millimeter plug. Now, we'll talk about that a little more in depth in a moment. This wired microphone has a flexible cable on it, which is really handy, especially if you have uh, some type of flute that you need to be able to fix this somehow and then get in there to put this microphone somewhere in a unique position. Very handy. So, uh, the charger box that comes with it has a little light on the top of it, and there is also a power light on the top of the unit. So, when you plug it in, and go to charge it, usually for about three or four hours is a full charge. The manufacturer currently says that this light will go off. I have heard tell from people that the light does not always go off. However, that does not mean your unit is not fully charged. You can tell when the unit is not in a fully charged state, when it starts performing poorly. An example, the audio becomes, the quality becomes a little staticky. Um, if you have used the amplifier straight for more than four hours, I would suggest that I would go ahead and charge it at that point. Basically, that's when it starts seeming like it's going down. Now, if you haven't been using it for two to four hours, it's not necessary to charge it. Usually, I've stored mine for up to a year without charging it, turned it on, and used it. Now, how long and how good of the performance, I can't promise you, but you know, it will stay charged for quite a while. Um, that aside, there is a couple of things that you need to know about how the amp works. Oh, I guess I should tell you, here is a uh, lanyard that you can use. It connects to two ends in the back back here. I've actually had people had to ask me how to connect this. There's nothing to it. There's a little like a little clip right here and you can clip it right in there and over here I've actually got a rubber band so this is made to go around your shoulder, around your neck. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> your shoulder or your neck? Okay. Anyway, um, and it's adjustable so it's just basically another way that you can hold on to the amplifier while you walk around and play your flute. Uh, let's see, there's a remote control. The remote control has changed a little over the years. I noticed when I looked at mine recently that it didn't have some of the features that this one does, and some of the buttons are in different locations. It was slightly larger than this one. Things have just changed. You know, time goes by, things change. Like I said, my model that I have is probably model two or three, and this is model four or five. Mine does not have some of the features this one does, so that's kind of nice. Um, one of the features on this amplifier remote control is a power button. In the old days, when you had your amplifier turned on, you could use this power button to put it in standby mode, which is basically kind of like a off, but it's not really off because you could turn it back on with this. Uh, these days, the power button is actually a non-functioning button. It doesn't do anything for you. 
unless you get one of those special amps that's like, you know, generation three of model this, which is possible. However, we're going to go over the features that you can use uh, both on the amplifier and the remote control today so that you know basically what you're getting. If you notice, there is an antenna here that is to use this unit in the radio mode. Currently, the only way that you can change the channels on radio mode is with the little fast forward or rewind buttons on the remote control. The carriage buttons on the unit will not change the FM if that's what you're listening to is FM radio. I've actually had a couple of customers told me that they appreciate being able to use the FM section of the radio. By the time that you see this video, FM may not even exist, to be honest with you. It's been going away for a long time. Um, however, like I say, it's still a good feature for those who may need it. When you turn the unit on with what is labeled as a volume on and off button, easy peasy, she's immediately going to say Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. And it's going to go in Bluetooth mode. It and the power light are going to blink here. Back in the old days, the power light blinking means that the battery is not fully charged. Um, these days, it may still do that if you're connected with Bluetooth. However, if you're not connected to this device via Bluetooth of another device, for example, your cell phone, um, the power light is going to blink constantly green. I'm supposing that if it changes colors, uh, you may expect something to change. However, that once again is a function that kind of varies from now on again. Uh, this unit is something that has been, like I say, in production for a long time. The reason that I carry this amplifier is because so many people have asked me for it. Uh, I've used these at events, at any opportunity that I've had to perform for a small venue in the public, uh, any time that I'm playing somewhere and I want to hear the echo feature, which is the whole reason that 99% of the people order this unit. And then they ask me a thousand questions about how the rest of it works, hence this video. So uh, I hope that I'm able to cover everything for you. There is a mode button. When you hit the mode button once, it goes to FM mode. So you hear the FM playing. I'm going to hit the fast forward button. It goes to the next program. 14,000 workers. Next program. You can actually program those. And if you hold the Q or fast forward button down, it'll go to the next available station. Once again, not a feature I really use a lot. You can hit the mute button and it'll mute it. The mute button is over here with a speaker with a line through it. You can't miss it. And if you hit it again, it'll unmute it. I am going to go AUX mode. to the AUX mode by hitting the mode button here. You can do that also by hitting the mode button on the remote control. When you go to AUX, the only features that will work is the microphone and the line in. That's what AUX means. It means auxiliary or line in. You can plug a 3.5 millimeter cable into this and you can basically hook it to anything. A cell phone type that has a AUX or headphone jack out can plug into that. If you have an adapter for your cell phone like I have to with mine, you can plug it in in a way to do that. Um, and if you use a record player, CD player, tape player, uh, an aux out from big piece of recording equipment or amplification system for whatever reason you need to plug that into this little tiny amp there's a place that you can put it into there is not a plug on this device to plug it into a, another piece of equipment so that you can hear it through that piece of equipment only to put into this one uh, so this is a like a termination here then there's a microphone jack over here as we have discussed you can plug your microphone into the mic slot and you'll be able to hear it if you have the volume turned up enough. Listen, the echo, yay, I love the echo. Uh, so that's what that part of the feature does. And if you plug the mic in to the line in, nothing. You don't get anything out of it. So remember, if you're plugging it in and you're not hearing anything, chances are it was plugged into the line in. Uh, so FYI on that. Mode button, next button, one all previous. If you have a USB and it has some backing tracks or anything in an MP3 format, it has to be an MP3 format, you can plug it into this unit right here. Play by USB drive. Gosh, that's loud. Bluetooth mode. It switched over immediately to play by USB drive. Uh, you can actually navigate through that with the mode button here on the remote when you have something plugged into the USB. If the USB does not contain audio tracks like this one, you notice, does not, 
it immediately goes over to the Bluetooth mode, which is a default mode. And if you do have MP3 backing tracks, it will start playing immediately. One question I get asked all the time is there is a one all button right in the middle of this unit. In the past, that has been two different modes, two different features. In this unit, it is a one all button, which means basically it's gonna continually repeat one track that you're currently playing, or it's gonna repeat all the tracks on the USB drive as long as they're in the same open folder. Uh, there is a play pause button that you can use here on the top. There's a previous and a next button. And there again, there's a mode button, the antenna, which you should use if you're using it in AM FM mode. If you notice, when I push the buttons on the remote control, I'm facing it towards the face of this unit here, not towards this blank section up here where the speaker is, not towards the side, not to the back, the other side or the bottom, because the sensor for this little dude is that little tiny red dot right there. That's the sensor. Now, it's not to say that if you hit it from here that you couldn't get to another feature, which I just did. Let's see. Bluetooth mode. Very loud. But, uh, you know, basically it needs to, to be facing that little deal right there. So this is just a real quick how to use this uh, amplifier unit. Here is your power cable. You want to plug it into, of course, undo the cable. Plug it into your power supply over here. Make sure the unit is off uh, and charge it. I have used the amplifier in the past while it's charging. That is not recommended by the manufacturer, something you can do. Um, and that's the, the uh, power charger you want to use with your amplifiers and one that comes with it. It is capable of switching automatically if you live in another country other than the United States. It can switch from 110 to 220 volts by itself. You just have to have the right kind of terminal to plug it into. And you usually can get those adapters just about anywhere. Otherwise, you're going to receive a unit that's like this one that is designed to be used uh, in the United States and Mexico and a couple of other countries that use the same, same style, double pin, flat side by side. You can call it a number of things. Um, adapter. Like I say, if you plug it into an adapter that goes to 220, it'll automatically switch to 220 and charge your amplifier just as it's supposed to. If you'll notice too, the unit is actually, uh, to me, because I've used so many different uh, chargers in the past, it's kind of out of the ordinary, but it's a DC 10 volt, 350 mega amps. So if something happens that you do some experimentation on this thing and it no longer exists or you can't find it, it is a 10 volt DC uh, 350 mega amps output and that's a 50 to 60 Hertz uh, 90 meg, uh, mega amps 100 to 240 volt AC input so that's where you're at there so output 10 volts DC 350 mega amps on here it has a little diagram to show you which part is the negative and which is the positive there's a straight line on the top and the hash line on the bottom if that helps you at all if you decide you need to order another one of these or buy one. Sometimes we do have them too, so you can ask us about that. If something happens, yours comes up missing. However, I'd spend a minute looking for it first. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Anyway, uh, going to the next thing, uh, really after that, that's how the unit works. It's very simple to operate. We've gone over all the buttons, all the modes. Oh, missed one, the EQ. So when the amplifier is on, and I turn it on with the volume at its lowest level so that you don't hear her say Bluetooth mode, FYI, um, I'm turning the volume up. If you notice, let me go ahead and put it in AUX mode so it quits flashing here. And that way you don't have to ask about why it's flashing. Let's see. AUX. There is an EQ button on here. When you hit the EQ button, it's going to go through the five preset equalizer settings. And they're going to say EQ1, EQ2, EQ3, EQ4, and EQ5. I personally the 10 or 15 years I've been using this amplifier, I never use the EQ. I really rarely ever use the radio. The primary features that I really enjoy the most about this amplifier is uh, the fact that it'll play from a USB drive or a micro SD card. I should mention that if you want to put your music on a micro SD card. Not as popular in the United States as it is other countries. Um, so I use the play by USB drive in this unit, I've used the Bluetooth, which I really enjoy quite a bit. It's pretty handy. And I use a standard um, amplification for my flute and plug this 
microphone in there, and that is all that I, I go for. There are other features on here that I just personally don't have need for. I like it for the amplification and for the echo. It's really it. So I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks really quickly here on how to connect it to your Native American flute. I've had other videos in the past showing how to connect it to other instruments. We may come back in the future and do another one of those kind of little, little add-on segments, um, but this is basically what I do. This microphone, as I mentioned, you can bend it around however you like. I find it convenient to Velcro it right here to the middle section of my flute, this flute being a five-hole flute and uh, doesn't have the fingering there, where those of you who have a six-hole flute that you have to cover that hole anyway, not one that you bought from me, by the way, <laughs> because you don't cover ours, uh, but if you have a six-hole that you cover there, there you go, it's covered. You know, I would suggest covering it with a little piece of tape or something and then putting the Velcro on it. But the nice thing about this is you can move the microphone away from your flute or put it closer, whichever one is best for you. If the way that you're bending it does not uh, give you enough strength or torsion to be able to keep it that way, you can kind of change it around. You'll notice too that there's a little wind sock on this thing and underneath the wind sock is a kind of unusually shaped microphone. It's not really too unusual, um, but this is a directional mic and it's going to pick up where the bottom of this here is facing that way. It picks up a little bit from back here, but honestly it picks up best from up here and it is best, especially with a Native American flute, to keep this windsock on it. Um, so you can keep it close to it or a little further away depending on your flute and the needs, whichever one works best for you. Uh, some people may find that it plays, it picks up better if you give it a little twist and put it over here on the side because then it's not in the direct view of the wind coming out of the flute. As the wind comes out of the flute, it is another feature that may be, you know, getting amplified. So you have to keep that in mind. Myself, mine usually looks something like that right here. This is not the only way you can attach this microphone. Uh, this is a piece of double-sided Velcro you can buy just about anywhere. I may have bought that piece at our local Walmart store. I may have gotten it at Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, Walgreens, CVS, uh, any hundred other places in the United States that I haven't mentioned. Um, you can buy double-sided Velcro just about anywhere. It's used normally to like bundle cables together like this is what you'll see people bundling cables or bundling dowels together. I don't know how many people buy that many dowels these days. Um, but uh, maybe bundling any of that kind of stuff together, but it's double-sided. One side is fuzzy, the other side is a little scratchy. And for that reason, it works great for your Native American flute. I personally suggest putting the fuzzy side towards your flute. And when you wrap it around, the convenient thing is having enough extra that you can actually make a little loop there. And for any of you who use a lapel mic with a clip on it, you can actually clip that right there. It's super handy. That's what I usually do. We do not sell these lapel mics. Uh, they're usually found just about anywhere, literally a dime a dozen. Uh, if you have a favorite lapel mic that you want to use, use that one. If you have a microphone that is specifically for cell phone uh, 3.5 millimeter plug-ins and it has a whole bunch of black bands on it, it may not work with this amplifier. Most of those are designed specifically for cell phones. So that's a little piece of heads up there. Uh, something else that will help you is if the cable that come with your microphone, whether it be the one that came with your amp or some other model, if it's not long enough for you, hey, check it out. A headphone 3.5 millimeter plug-in does work in there. The headphone uh, plug-ins are made to plug in with any device, not just a cell phone. And uh, you can plug this in there. And now you have like six feet worth of microphone, which is, hey, that's, that's a lot cooler, right? Um, for any of you who have purchased a wireless microphone, whether it be from me or from somewhere else, and it is not specific to cell phones, there again, keep in mind that that uh, does matter on so many levels. As long as it is made to work for any device uh, with a 3.5 millimeter plug, you can actually plug this into right here, and there you go, a wireless microphone. This is one of the ones that we actually carry, so you've got that as an option. This unit plugs in, and then this unit over here is what connects to your flute. And check this out. I've made this in other videos. We may still have some of those videos up because they're specific to wireless microphones. But if you glue a piece of Velcro on the outside of this thing so that the fuzzy piece is side out, you can actually 
stick it right on the side of your flute, which is incredibly handy. The wireless microphones that I carry, there again, have that bendable head on them. I know people that use them with ukuleles, that use them with steel flutes, that use them with pan flutes, that use them with harmonica, and a number of other items. Uh, you can just connect it right on the side of this, take it off and switch to another. In one of my previous videos, I actually had several flutes there and I was continually playing them and switching this out from one to the next, which is super cool that you can do that. We're not here today to talk about this microphone that will be and has been a different video in the past, so just FYI uh, on that as well. And I think the last thing that I have to cover is how to connect it via Bluetooth, which is a question I get on occasion. It's probably one of the easiest things to do if you've ever connected any device uh, to your cell phone with Bluetooth in the past. Uh, make sure that it is in Bluetooth mode. That is where this unit is flashing blue and has a blinking light over here. Then you turn the Bluetooth on. Let me see. It's in flashing Bluetooth mode. I'm going to turn it on. And then there is going to be a product named HY-898. And once you connect to that product, it makes that sound. And on my phone over here, it says connected for audio, which is what this thing will do. You can play music through this. And while you're playing that music through this, you can play your flute as well by connecting the microphone into the microphone jack. And I think I try to do this as quickly as possible, mostly because I don't want to waste your time. For those of you looking for that one little piece of information uh, that answers your question. And uh, certainly we didn't have a lot of grounds to cover. <laughs> so I think that about sums it up. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're enjoying your amplifier, which is made to be very simple. It is not complicated in any way, shape, or form. I do not mean to, mean to lead you into the belief that it is. This is the easiest amplifier that you could possibly have to use on anything, especially the world's simplest musical instrument. So very easy to use and certainly more demonstrations of how this amplifier um, plays and performs are currently available on our YouTube channel. If you look for any of the music videos where the amplifier is the little thumbnail of the video there, you'll see it being used, which is kind of cool. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for checking out our other videos if you're interested in the Native American flute. If you're not, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. No, no shame on you. No, I couldn't do that to you. But uh, you guys take care. Happy flute playing. Happy flute making for those of y'all still interested in doing that kind of thing. It's a lot of work, ain't it? Anyway, I'll see you very soon and very much again soon. Bye. <laughs>